can get in a calculus of with parametric curves, but before we do that, we'll still look at some parametric curves. Last class we introduced it, we, we looked at an ellipse. We also just looked at a curve that once we eliminated the parameter, it was actually a cubic curve. And you can eliminate the parameter if you want. Um, so I thought I'd just start with an example, just a common example of a, a parametric curve. So here's a parametric curve, and we'll just sketch it. I thought I'd put down one of the most common ones you see in, in calculus three. Something like this. Um, there you go. There's parametric equations. A parametric curve, this is defining some parametric curve. And sometimes they give you limits on you know how far to sketch it. Go from t equals this value to t equals this value, like t equals negative power of two to t equals power of two. But let's just sketch this curve. Let's just go ahead and do it. And remember, this method works every time, right? I just make a table. Uh, but because of cosine and sine, the nature of these trig functions, do you agree for the t values that we select? It'd be good to use 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, etc. I want to do that. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And let's just see what happens with these x, y coordinates. We'll sketch the curve. We'll even put an arrow on the curve to indicate the path in which t increases. Um, what's going on at zero? So cosine is zero. One. Sine is zero, zero. So when I get to point five zero, I'm going to have power two. Well, that's zero, that's... And you know what? Last class we did an ellipse. Let's put a five here as well. I apologize. Take a five in front of sign it. Just to see how this is different. If we got fives, both coefficients of the cosine and the sine. When that comes out five, that's negative five, zero. That's zero, negative five. And finally, this point's the same as this point. And it's five, zero. Okay, we'll sketch the curve. Sketch the parametric curve. Um, does it come out to be? So this is just a what? Circle. So it takes on a circle. That's the curve. Which way is it going though as t increases? That way or this way? It's going counterclockwise. It was at 5, 0. This was at t equals 0. And up here, t equals pi over 2. And it was going this way. I'll just put an arrow to indicate the direction of that. They write that in the directions too in section 10.1. They say sketch a curve, draw an arrow to indicate the direction as t increases. I only plotted positive numbers, but this gave us the full loop. This was continued repeating this pattern, right? Um, it's funny, this section. I know we hit parametric curves. Today we're going to do calculus with parametric curves. Then you won't see parametric curves after that. You won't see them after that um, until Calc 3, until you get into Chapter 12. And then they come up repeatedly. Um, all of calculus 3, you'll notice doing everything parametrically, even up to chapter 16. So you'd be in chapter 16, like the remaining part of a calc 3 course, and you'll want to make a circle represented by parametric equations. So you're going to have to reflect back on this. It may be a distance, though. This is what chapter? Chapter 10, and you'll be in chapter 16. So it's just something just just recall. It's, it's the only probably pitfalls, how we hit it, and we don't see it below. So very good. Um, hey, I'm just curious. What do you think would have happened? This thing went counterclockwise. What would happen if I did sine and cosine? And I'll use the same. Actually, I just want to see what's the difference. It definitely will still make a circle, everyone. 
And you notice why? What's going on with this relationship? x squared plus y squared, well, if that equal 1, it would equal what's 5 squared? Yeah. But see that it's making a circle? That's what we're saying. It's still making a circle. That's a circle in Cartesian. Right? That's where if we eliminate the parameter. Um, but what's the difference? Let's just see. I'll think all these. We know it's going to be a circle. Uh, what's going on at zero? Zero, five. Five, zero. Well, I can just start there. Now, when it started at zero equal five. Now, that's t equals zero. Here's the difference. I'm plugging in t equals zero in here. And then t equals five or two, it went to here. And we can fill in the rest. It's going to follow a circle again. What's the only difference then? There you go. So it's just something important to remember for count three. The only difference here is how it moved in terms of t increasing in the direction. Because you'll be doing something called line intervals. And they call, when it's, when it's moving counterclockwise, they, they call that positive orientation. That's the word they use, positive orientation. And you'll sit there and go, well, how can I make it you know, have positive orientation? Put the cosine before the sine. <laughs> in terms of x and y. We put sine for cosine, I'll rotate this one. Clockwise. Does that want to go with that? Hey, okay, cool. And one more thing, I just wanted to show you that that's a circle. These also would be circles. Um, x equal to sine of 2t, y equals cosine of 2t. I just want to give you a bunch of ex examples of what circles look like. 5 cosine 40. Oh, I used 5 before. I used 3. Y equals 3 sine 40. Circle. This is a circle. This is a circle. So even if these had 2t's in there, cosine 2t, sine of 2t, you'll still be having a parametric curve that is a circle. Okay? As by that you know, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. This is a circle with the radius one. This was a circle with the radius five. What's this circle's radius? Trace three. Can we trace three? I have a radius of three. You'll see, like x squared plus y squared would turn out to be nine. That's what's happening there. So that's a circle. That's a circle. That's a circle. You get a lot of circles. But I'll go back to the problem we did last class. We had something like this. 3 sine t and was that it? That wasn't a circle. What was it? See, that made the ellipse. So you see the difference? What if one has a 3, one has a 1? Okay, now you got the ellipse. Okay. And then anything else, you're just plotting a curve. When it comes to, you know, x equals t plus 1 and y is t squared plus 2. So, hey, one more of these. I'm picking this one because I did this like two weeks ago in my Cal 3 class. Alright, can you sketch this? x equals 2 squared of t and y equals 2 minus t. Just so you don't think everything is trigonometric. <laughs> Not all parametric curves are trigonometric. Think about that. And let's just go from 0 to 4. Let's just sketch this curve from zero. So in chapter 13 in Calc 3, you sketch the parametric curves, but then you draw vectors on them. Tangent vectors, which are velocity vectors, and this represents position. Um, you want to just use zero, one, two, three, and four? They said just sketch from zero to four. What's going on at zero? <coughs> zero. Zero. Two. How about a one? Two. One. One. How about a two? Uh, 
Two squared two. Two squared two all right. <laughs> what's, what's two times one point four about? Squared two is one point four. Two point eight. That one just about two point eight. And two minus two is zero. All right. Another uh, square root of three is about one point seven. What's two times one point seven? Three points. So, oh, what was it? Three point four. So roughly three point. Because we're plotting these. Right, we're gonna plot it. So we're like, ah, I'll plot that about three point four. But three in here, it's what? At least this is neat. What's this coming up? Two times the square root of four is two times two is four. But this goes to two minus four is negative. All right, let's just see what it's like. And we'll put an arrow on it to represent the that. Okay, was it zero two? Here's my worst. Here is a test. Is there a two there or there? And it happens a lot. Where is zero two? Is it that one or that one? This is the x-axis, that's the y-axis. Y-axis. Right there, very good. So just be careful. Because that can throw off everything else, right? That's a good sketch. Very good. Two, one. 2.8, zero. Okay, about there. 3.4, negative one, and then? At four, it got down to negative two. Okay, this curves looks like it's good. And which way is it moving? Where's the path? That's the direction of the path. And I'm curious, if you wanted to, could you eliminate the parameter? Could you eliminate the parameter if you wanted to? That means get rid of t. T is the parameter. That's why they call these parametric equations. Uh, we have to do some substitution, so I'll let you all be creative. What could you substitute? Like, could you solve for t in one of these? And pick the one that's easier. I think that's easier. What would t equal? Y or 2 minus y. All right, t would equal 2 minus y. I'll make a note of that. t equals 2 minus y in this relationship, right? And then I'll take this 2 minus y and substitute it into this equation. Right? So x will equal 2 times the square root of 2 minus y. Right? Does anybody care about that? Um, and that might help much, but what if you square both sides? You might make sense of this thing. You get what? x squared equals 2 times parentheses 2 minus y. 2, 4 minus 2y. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, well, let me see. x squared would equal. What's that? 8 minus a 4y <laughs> equals x squared. And I'm just playing around with this. What would y equal if I wanted to solve for y? I could do add 4y over here. This looks like a parabola, huh? But then you got to divide the what? By 4. What's 8 over 4? 2. So does this look familiar in a pre calc course? That's a parabola. It's got a negative in front. So instead of being an up you, it's a what? It's a down U, and it shifted what? Up two notches, right? The only reason it's Y, because it has that coefficient of that. I didn't have to do this, though, did I? That's what I mean. I just wanted you to see that in these problems, it's like, oh, I can eliminate the parameter T and make the curve like I did back in, you know, prior to this calculus course. Calc 2. Does that make that? Hey, now we're going to do calculus with parametric curves. And that just means we're going to apply some calculus to this. Let's get a tangent line to a curve. We'll find a tangent line to the curve, but everything's going to be in T, so there's the challenge. So we've got to come up with some, <laughs> some math forms for this. Um, here's the first example. I raised it. Okay. No, great question. Like this one was parabolic. I, and I actually love your question because I know I hit a lot of those because those come up a lot in Cal 3, but 
You also get this very often. I want to give you an example. We don't have to sketch it. But just for your observations. Do you notice this doesn't have any trig expressions? And it doesn't have any square roots. And it doesn't have any x t squareds or t cubes. This would be a straight line. So it's easy, very easy to recognize a straight line parametrically. You won't have any t squareds. You won't have any, it's like a y equals mx plus b. That's what this is. This is a y equals mx plus b. And they're very easy to recognize. Because there's no t squareds, there's no t cubes, there's no sine of t's or cosine of t's or cube roots or anything like that. But if you sketch that, make it, you're going to notice you just get a straight line. I think that's important because all you'll do in Calc 3 is you're just going to add a z component. You have like pi minus d. It's still a straight line just in three dimensional space. So I love your question. Not everything's a circle. You get a lot of circles, but not everything. Or a lips. Sometimes you get curves that are parabolas, but you do get some lines. I think great. Everyone, this problem is like number seven and ten point two. They want you to find an equation of the tangent line to a curve. So the first of all, let's go back. What's the equation of a tangent line to a curve? Y equals mx plus b, right? Or if I put it in point slope, point slope form, isn't the equation of a tangent line to a curve? Well, that's the point. So I just want to point that out. That's what they're asking us to get. The challenge is everything is in t, the parameter t. So we need to do something. We've got to figure something out how we're going to work with that. Because we're used to this slope here is just what? That's just f prime of what variable? x, but now everything's going to be in t's. By the way, what's another way I can write that? Um, dy dx? y prime? y prime, f prime of x, do you all agree? So the challenge here, we're like, what's going on in 10.2? We know parametric curves. These curves define parametrically. Usually they use the parameter t. And something else I want to tell you. It doesn't always have to be t. It could be an m. The parameter could be an m. It's just the common variable that we'll use. Use t. Always oh, use t. All right. All right. All right. So here's the equation. You'll notice it's parametrically x equals. Whatever, I'm going to change it up a little bit. Okay. Um, how about x equals two plus three natural log of t. And I got y equal to t squared plus 6. And the directions, I'll leave this here. They say, find an equation of the tangent line to the curve. All right. so I have to give you a point. So where are we finding that? At what point? So how about at the point? I'm going to make it up. How about the point? The one i got to make sure it's on a curve. Two, seven. Yes, because that's on a curve. I just made up that point. So we're going to find the equation of the tangent line of the curve at that point. Do you all agree if we eliminate the parameter, this is just a calculus one problem? I want to be clear about that. Does anyone agree? If we ended up, we figured out a way to eliminate the parameter, you know, solve for t, then what? Substitute the other, you just turn this into a calculus one problem. So feel free to look at it that way. The only thing is sometimes it can get, net. sometimes it makes it easier, sometimes it makes it hard. I do want to point that out. It depends on the problem. Sometimes it's, oh, it's an easy substitution. I know this curve. Then other times it gets, oh, I gotta do product rule, I gotta do quotient rule. So, anyways, we're gonna figure out a new way to get this dy dx. So, how about this? How about let's let dy dx be, because we have these t's, right? And how about I just multiply one to it? So, I'm gonna make it bigger. And when all I'm gonna do, you know the rules of mathematics, they call this the identity property. Let's just multiply a 1 to this. I won't affect it. What's 1 times 5? Five? 5. Well, when I'm doing multiply a 1 to a 7, it stays 7. Well, 
I'll just multiply one of this, which is 1 over dt and 1 over dt. And this will be our math equation for finding dy dx that we could put right there. So I'm going to put that in your notes. This will be our equation that we'll use to find dy dx. That's dy dx. Do you notice what I did? I just multiplied 1 over dt times 1 over dt. Hey, how do you divide fractions? Just so you can check that this works. When you divide fractions, you multiply the what? It's a reciprocal, right? And when I do that, what would I get? Do I over dx? Let's just check it. Let's check to make sure I'm not making up some trash here. <laughs> I said dy over dt times dt over dx. Does it work? Yeah. So that's what I mean. Feel free. If you forget this on a test, just go, wait a minute. I know this has to work out to be dy over dx. See how it works? So that's our nice invention. That's how we'll find this. Get the derivative of y with respect to t, put it here. Get the derivative of x with respect to t, and then we're going to plug in the what? The point. And then we're going to be like, aha. There is going to be a little moment where we're going to go, huh? So we'll get there. I'll wait till we get there. Someone good with this? So for your notes, what's the formula? When we're doing calculus with parametric curves to find dy dx, just dy dt over dx dt. Cool? All right, let's do it then. What's dy dt? Oh, that's this guy. Ah, 2, 2. What's dx dt? Ooh, what's the derivative of 2 is 0. But what's the derivative of 3 L on a t with respect to t? 3 over t. 3 over t. Because everyone, do you agree the derivative of natural log of t is 1 over t? And that 3 is just a constant, right? So I'll put this down here. Get this out of the way so we have room. This is awesome. I'm going to get this answer right. Here's my answer. Find the equation of tangent to the curve. Y minus, what was the y one day? Seven. Seven. Equals, we're going to put the slope there. That's f prime of x. x minus up two. So what's going right here? The dy dx that we just found. But everyone, I'm stuck. Huh? Don't you need to plug a point in it? That's the point. That's not a t. This is important. Let's label this. That is not t, and that's not t. What's this letter? X that's plus. x. That's why this diagonal formula we just got has t's in it. So we need a math method that we all have to share, make sure everyone's aware of. And when you get stuck like this, you can figure out the t value. I need to need the t value at this point. What is t? at this point, at point 2, comma 7. How can I do that? Am I going to win? Oh, he knows. What would you do? You could use the original equation to solve the t. He says use the original equation. What I need you to do, use the original equation, and you could set, whichever one's easier to you, set the 2 plus 3 element t equal to 2 and solve for t. Or, what's another option? If that's messy for you. Set the t squared plus 7, t, excuse me, t squared plus 6 equal to 7 and solve for t. Okay? Well, I'm going to try, which one looks easier to you? I'm trying to figure out t. So this is a big problem right now. Question mark. What is the t value? I just want to find out what it is so I can plug in the number in here and put my slope and have the final answer. Right? right? The left one, you going to have to get the square root plus minus on the right one. So good observation. It says, if I looked at the right one, t squared plus 6 would have to equal what? A 7. He goes, that's easy. 7 minus 6 is 1. The trouble is, this gives me t equal to two possible answers. And we know t is only going to be one answer here. t could be a 1 or a negative 1. Y'all follow me? Which one is it? 